We're standing in a field of deep rooting mixture that we established last autumn, early September. We've grazed this with our livestock and it's now in its recovery period and we'll be grazing it again in the next couple of weeks. We're an organic livestock farm. We're growing uh, about 500 acres of grass mixtures. Uh, the Cholderton lay we started off with, but we found ourselves moving to a slightly different lay more recently in recent years um, to try and get more productivity from this ground. We're on quite thin chalk soil, not inherently that productive. Obviously, as an organic farm, we're not going to be putting anything on it. So what we've got growing and how we manage what we've got growing with the livestock is the key to, to increasing the productivity, diversity and uh, success of, of this ground. This was arable land, so we've suffered from kind of problems of compaction and the livestock exacerbating that. So we're putting in this deep rooting plants to break up the pans, to draw up minerals and nutrients from deeper down, what we started putting in, we've got a little bit of rye grass, but much more Coxfoot, Timothy, and we have in here also obviously chicory just coming into flower. We've got lucerne, we've got sanfoin, we've got American sweet clover, and uh, various mixtures of other white clovers. These plants are all working to help us solve the problems that we've got. What we're trying to do here is really generate as much biomass as we can, and we're not looking for tidy, neat little lays. We want it to grow upwards and we want it to grow thick, because then we're creating biomass, which we're then turning into manure and into a, into a, a, a fertilizer onto the ground. We're trying to build soil. So what we're doing it with is Indian water buffalo. We've got a herd of about 200 animals, breeding animals, uh, cows, about 70 cows, young stock, bull obviously. We're in the second year of experimenting with a different type of grazing management. We mob the whole herd up into one group. We put them onto small paddocks of between two and five acres depending on the productivity of the field they're in and we put them in there and we make them work. So we get a good even graze and we get a lot of trampling underfoot. So we're pushing a lot of the grass and plant matter down into contact with the soil in the hope that the bugs and creatures from underground are going to come in, the, the worms are going to come in, they're going to start turning that into soil. We're also giving a sort of protective mat which is uh, keeping the moisture in, suppressing weed growth and with these deep rooting plants the lucerne, the chicory also, we are protecting ourselves against real dry weather which is ironic this year because it hasn't really stopped raining but the last few summers we've had have been very dry and where we have had lucerne on the farm we see it just carry on and thrive and keep growing whereas the other more shallow rooting type mixtures we've had in before are doing less well. We've been using Cotswold seeds for a few years now and there's, a, I think, a very interesting dynamic between the people providing us with the seed and how the farmers are then managing it and making use of it. And so all this chicory is a new thing for us and, you know, we'll talk to the people at, at Cotswolds about, you know, the role that each thing has got to play and, of course, the essentialness of having the grass and the clovers in there, but what other things we can put in as well. And also, to be honest, we want all this growth, but we want it as varied as possible. We want as much different flavours and different things for these animals to eat uh, and liven up their day. Every day they're going onto a fresh paddock of grass and they've got this stand in front of them that they can mow down and get all the different benefits of the different plants. What we're finding with the buffalo is that they, they like eating mature stands of grass. They're getting the seeds out of the grass, they're eating off the seed heads, they're knocking a lot of grass seed to the ground so we're getting new grass growing through and they are you know, doing very well on it. The dependence on rye grass and high input systems is, is not really doable in the long term. There isn't the money in the livestock to, to, to maintain that sort of system but there isn't or the, 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 the finite resources available for us to continue using them so heavily. So what we're looking at is finding natural systems, looking to the past, looking to how things were done in the past, looking to new ways of doing things to try and get productivity and get things working without a dependence on, on fossil fuels. There isn't a one solution to everybody's problem. You can grow ryegrass and put nitrogen on it or you can think about the problems that you've got where you are and try and find ways of, 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 of solving them by what you grow and also by how you manage your animals and how they are going to be working in tandem with the plants that you're growing to address these problems and get more productivity. And of course the more we can grow, the more we produce, the more buffalo we can keep, the more dung we're going to get on the ground and what we're really hoping for is better growth, more animals, more meat and as a sideline to soil repair, a bit more money too.